glad you're staying with us as we continue live at 6.30 on this severe weather alert morning. I'm Heidi Miley. Developing right now a meeting on a controversial affordable housing project in Midtown Bozeman went well into the morning hours past midnight, and we now have a decision from Bozeman City Commissioners. Happening today, the Montana Supreme Court's oral argument schedule lists the Youth Climate Action case, where 16 youths are suing the state of Montana. And also new this morning, wildfire and heat dangers are all too real on these severe weather alert days. Now officials are holding open houses in Missoula County to educate the public. Well, the time is at 6.30, and once again, we're starting out with weather alert days posted. We are tracking some pretty extreme heat, but during the morning, you got a chance to get outside. It's a good-looking start this morning. Live look with Tucknuck Resort and Casino weather camera. We've had a gorgeous sunrise over Flathead Lake. If you happen to snap a photo, upload it at NBCMontana.com slash chime in. Butte, Kalispell, Bozeman, more of the same. Sunny skies to kick off your Wednesday. Temperature sitting at 58 right now in Bozeman and Missoula. 57 in Kalispell. Butte, I bet you like that 54 degree temperature. After all, you were in the low 90s yesterday. It was your first 90 degree day so far this year, and it's not going to be your last. Missoula, noon, we're at 88. By 2 p.m., 96, 99 in that 5 o'clock hour. No matter what you're doing today in Missoula, whether you're heading out to lunch at Karis Park or you're trying to get a run or hike in, uh, make sure you've got a way to stay cool and stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water uh, because heat exhaustion is no joke. For Bozeman, your day planner, 85 at noon this afternoon, 95 in that 5 o'clock hour. You're going to tie a record potentially tomorrow in the Bozeman area. But I'm going to tell you how much longer this heat's going to last coming up in about 10 minutes. Thank you so much, Brooke. Developing right now, Bozeman City Commission voted to deny approval of a controversial affordable housing development, the Guthrie, and the vote came early this morning, well past midnight. The denial passed three to two. Mayor Terry Cunningham and Commissioner Emma Bodie uh, did not vote for this denial. They cited findings from city staff members who recommended the commission approve this housing development in Midtown. But commissioners in the majority here emphasize the size of the units, most of which the developers classify as one bedroom for rent pricing, pricing purposes. Although in size and layout, they more closely resemble studios. This is a key concern with the application. Certainly the, the one bedroom and one bedroom plus, I believe is what they call it, are, are really studios. And thus, for me, the AMI is incorrect. The equations are off, and that's a no. The decision followed substantial public comment, as well as 255 comments citizens wrote to the commission. Most opposed the development. The Guthrie would have been the first project to use Bozeman's deep incentives. In this case, they would have allowed two additional stories with no minimum parking requirement. Bozeman's affordable housing ordinance establishes those incentives, and that ordinance is also under fire, with multiple residents calling on commissioners to rescind or revise them, citing the Guthrie as an example of the shortfalls. Happening today, I'm pulling up the schedule for the Montana Supreme Court. It lists oral arguments starting at 9 this morning on the youth climate change case. In 2020, 16 Montana youth sued the state, alleging certain provisions of Montana's State Energy Act and the Montana Environmental Policy Act violate their rights by perpetuating the use of fossil fuels and prohibiting state agencies from considering the impacts of greenhouse gas emissions or climate change in their environmental reviews. The district court concluded the youth have standing because they suffered past and ongoing injuries from the state's failure to consider greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Now, on appeal, the state argues the youth failed to establish standing because the policies did not cause their injuries, and the state further maintains in validating a provision within those acts will not readdress those claimed injuries. 
East of Glacier National Park, officials are addressing community members about the St. Mary siphon failure. The catastrophic failure and flooding on June 17th affects some 14,000 water users in Montana and more than 18,000 irrigators. Some of the washouts are 30 to 50 feet deep. Numerous organizations and more than 150 people met for a town hall meeting on possible solutions, water deliveries, and demands, and what's being done next. The Bureau of Reclamation has six recommendations and recommending permanent replacements be buried instead of above ground and cross a new bridge. It's two baggage siphons. Uh, whether it's steel or HDPE, and you know, that's the solution we're going down. Uh, we're not gonna go through another iteration. A set of permits to get us on site immediately this month to, to clean up the site, and fight the river cleaned up, and then secondary path for the ultimate replacement of both sites. Uh, that is all kind of ongoing right now. We're trying as fast as we can. Yeah, current cost estimates are around $70 million. We're told 40 million, $42 million is currently secured. We have an update on that deadly shooting in Yellowstone National Park. Park County, Wyoming is identifying the shooter as Samson Lucas Beriah Fussner of Milton, Florida. The FBI is now leading this investigation. Fussner was shot. The Fussner was shot during a shootout with an officer in the park June 4th and died at the scene. Available body-worn camera footage of the incident is to be released within 30 days. All right, now in coverage related to our sweltering hot temperatures, a fast-moving fire is burning out of control in the Horse Gulch area northeast of Helena. It's burning south of York. I clicked on the DNRC active fires map this morning. As of 11.04 last night, it was covering some 165 acres. Windy conditions are moving it. Uh, we've got a view from the northeast side of Mount Helena. No evacuation orders are in place. Numerous resources are on the scene. You're asked not to call 911 to make sure those lines stay open. And we'll keep you updated as more information comes in. Well, speaking of wildfires happening today, health officials are inviting you to two different wildfire and extreme heat open houses in Missoula County. We have a live look over the Missoula Valley right now from our live Hellgate plumbing camera up at Snowball. As far as these open houses, you can go to them and get informed at the Sealy Lake Community Foundation building from 4.30 to 6.30 tonight or at the Missoula County Fairgrounds Floriculture Building, number 15, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And wildlife officials are now implementing fishing restrictions as our temperatures soar. The Big Hole, Beaverhead, Jefferson, Madison, Ruby, and Sun Rivers, and the Clark Fork, and the Silverbow Creek in their entirety will be closed to all fishing daily from 2 p.m. until midnight. This is going into effect at 2 this afternoon. The restrictions will stay in effect until the conditions improve. All right, Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster is standing by. What are you seeing with these conditions, Brooke? You know, anything you need to get done outdoors, I try to get to it early, just like the past couple of days. Things are really going to heat up as early as lunchtime. We're taking a live look right now in the Kalispell Sportsman Ski House weather camera. Not a cloud in the sky. A little hazy, though, for us this morning around the Flathead Valley. As we make our way through the afternoon, temperatures heating up. Day Planner puts Kalispell at 68 degrees by 8 a.m., 87 by lunchtime. Missoula, we're going to be sitting at 81 degrees by 10 a.m. So if your windows are open this morning, you're going to have to close them up, say, in that 8 to 9 o'clock hour because we are going to be feeling the heat with 90 by noon. We're tracking high temperatures right around 100 degrees the next couple of days. I'll tell you how long it's going to last with our 10-day forecast coming up in the morning sprint. All right, thanks, Brooke. Also coming up, a group is working to assure abortion access in Montana. Hear why it is crying foul in how the Secretary of State's office is counting its signatures. And our extreme weather is already taking a toll on cherries. Now we're asking about the outlook for Montana huckleberries. And here's a live look again from our Hellgate plumbing weather camera at Snow Bowl. A Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster has your day planner after the break.